What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the eleventh episode of the Read Me podcast. My name is Bonuka, and I'm Yudanje. And let's get to it. Not a lot of stuff actually happened this week in terms of tech in Sri Lanka. So whoa, whoa, that... hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me um, let me iterate on that. We are actually doing this episode early because Did a certain you say person, yes, a uh, certain person has to iterate. go to Nepal. Okay, but I mean. Yeah, I'll be off in the weekend, so it's we are doing a it a little. Some person is fleeing the country. Yes, people sometimes have to flee the country for a few days to get stuff done. Yeah. I'm sure. So while he's going to be in Tibet hunting yetis and getting hammered by random priests and getting snowed under and all all manner of things, we are going to be focusing. Because <laughs> that's e-sports. why people go to Nepal to get hunted by yetis and, <laughs> and to get snowed under. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. See, my knowledge of Nepal, Nepal comes entirely from this Tintin book that I had. Captain Haddock and uh, Tintin they went to Nepal, and literally all of this stuff happened to them. Okay. Oh, by the way, isn't the new Far Cry uh, four? Mm. Isn't that based is. on Nepal? Right. It is, and it's epic. A uh, couple of friends of mine got the game and they installed it. Ah, rich people. And uh, anyway, we were playing it, and it's amazing. Is it? You need out? a. What? It is. Oh, I should um, get it then. The thing is, you need a hefty amount of hardware to run it, but in your case, that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but uh, be be aware that uh, there are quite a few patches coming out. There were some issues. Uh, you get a black screen on launch, and uh, you know a few weird glitches. It doesn't look like Ubisoft being having. Oh a wait, this, this is the one that they had the the face disappearing glitch, right? No, 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 no. That no. that was that was Assassin's Creed, also done oh, by right, Ubisoft. Right. I, mean, I just hear like, Ubisoft, and all I hear is like bugs, bugs, bugs. Pretty bugs, much. Bugs. I mean, it it doesn't look like they've been having a lot of success with their QA team. Whoever they are, they should be shot in the head, preferably with one of the guns in Far Cry 4. Uh, but uh, overall, the game's very playable, much better than I feared when I, I played really the game. I just really want to like, r- like rampage on Tuk Tuks. Well, what do you think I've been doing these days? <laughs> I mean, not IRL, <laughs> just Far Cry. What do you think I've been doing these days? <sighs> All right, so um, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of esports news on our hands. Uh, firstly, Slit held something called Gen X. And Wait, Slit does esports? Well, Slit tr- put it this way: Slit tried to do esports and they failed miserably at it. Uh, they held this thing called Gen X um, gaming tournament. I'm doing the whole finger thing, even though you can't see me doing it. And uh, according to our correspondent who was there. They promised five thousand bucks as the prize money. They gave thousand bucks better than last time. Apparently, they gave nothing last time. <laughs> and uh, they what do you mean the they promised five thousand bucks and they didn't? That's a big for, the, for the winners. For the winners. And then ah, the so is, um, is it what's the to me, what's the game? Is it Dota or something? Uh, this was this was I think uh, track. He play he was playing Trackmania. There were there were lots of other games. There was Tekken. There was Mortal Kombat. There was uh, Call of Duty. There was Dota. Interestingly, Call of Duty didn't finish. Because you see, the organizers wanted to finish the event by eight o'clock, and they literally like shut down the whole place and turned off the power in the middle of the whole thing. That is sad. That's sad on a whole new level. See, this is <laughs> this is why esports isn't going anywhere. These tournaments are being held by idiots. When you let third parties, also event managing people, or whoever the hell they think they are. To run an e-sport event or any not, sort of it's, event, it's it, not a third party. It's it's, 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 them, it's, it's its fault, right? Well, the thing is, you can't exactly ban people from having gaming tournaments. It's no, I'm not telling valid. you to. I'm not saying that we should ban people from uh, having gaming tournaments. I'm saying you should actually take a little bit more. Like, yeah, you should take, know what you're doing. Just take it a little. Seriously, it's not that hard, and it's not that easy as well. You don't, you can't just that, say exactly. And it's not like you come there, you play most on, and you and you back off. It's. You I know, guess the it, people who are organizing it aren't necessarily gamers, right? They don't understand. Mm, the, well, 
they're, they're probably are the sort of gamers who play, like, I don't know, who See, played most they are, wanted. Exactly. They are the, the single player gaming generation that was raised in Sri Lanka, which have no idea about. Well, maybe some of them do, but esports, the community mm. aspect of it's a no. totally different. No, they, they most most people really have no idea. But but people who do have some idea have also been having tournaments. The good part is uh, GCDL happened. Right. I'm pretty sure you know what it is. Yes. You don't. What is it? GCDL is isn't that done by Game LK as well? Yeah, it is. It exactly. Is. Uh, this is the Gamer.LK Clans Dota League, yes. the Dota 2 League. And yesterday I watched um, the last match that I is think between PNX one, right? It's uh, Take Ade and Death Sentence. Take yes. Well, Wait, I is it, say, is it is it Thekade? It's Thekade. It's not the Kade. It's you see, I've seen this name mm-hmm. online so many times. It's Te. They got the accent over the E. Like they te. don't. They don't. Yes, they do. Not, yes, not they on do. the stuff I've seen it on. It was. You like see, the you've kade. been looking at the wrong. You've been looking in the wrong places. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, because like I, I was pretty much screenshotting the whole thing. Let me let me dig through my screenshots folder and see what I have. There's a pretty good place. And I, I don't mean, mind those guys that. got. I remember a while back they got selected to like to go like a very long way in the Dota Internationals. Yes, and well, these two teams are pretty much the best teams, the best Dota teams in in Sri Lanka, and uh, Theka Day in particular have been spotted in a lot of Southeast Asian tournaments. Uh, in, in quite yes, a little bit. Southeast Asians like T. <laughs> <laughs> well, they haven't. They haven't really won stuff. To the point where you'd start uh, seeing them in every, you know, in every other gaming journal. But they are pretty good. And, are they like uh, the sorts of the the Natas, the Natas? How do you say Natas Vincere? <laughs> Navi, just call just call them Navi. Yeah. Like. Are they the Navi. sort of Navi of Sri Lanka? I guess I don't know. Uh, kind of. And then I mean, if there's, there's no one better than them, right? It's that that sentence and take a day. Right. And unless they're all the same, are they? I've... Have we been lying to our people all this time? No, no, we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> huh. uh, anyway, I saw some really epic plays. Like, um, I'm sending you some screenshots. Uh, it should be there. And uh, overall, a little bit of drama as well. Because these yes, two teams there's are... Always no, drama, there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's always, always drama. drama. There's, there's, a, there's a bit of unprofessional drama as far as these two teams are concerned. Uh, well, thank God we actually got to see a match, unlike, for example, the last time in SLCG, where people started slapping each other. SLCG Bagarov... was fun, though. <laughs> SLCG was fun. SLCG just is we didn't, always fun. We didn't, get to see a, we didn't get to see a really good finals match because, well, well, somebody decided that they would probably cast an ulti in real life. <laughs> if you get what I mean. Well, uh, all in all, GCDL was uh, was pretty fun. Dota is and... actually played really widely in Sri Lanka. Dota is played really widely. This is the thing. I don't know. I really don't understand anything about Dota. I have played the original a bit. But even that, I mean, not really into it. The Dota 2 is played very widely in Sri Lanka. Yeah. It's um, actually it's pretty the fun. League and of Legends a audience is a bit smaller which is very counterintuitive to how the how it's played out in the real world right the mm. whole the world as a whole southeast asian countries play dota so much more than they play league see it's like this league is um, most of the league player base comes from europe hmm. and i guess ping is an issue it's not just ping it's the culture you see when uh, you have to think of it in this way you see warcraft 3 arrived and then there was there was a Warcraft 3 modification that eventually became Dota, and then people started playing Dota. They started going to cafes like I used to cut school, yeah, yeah. and go did. in the interval <laughs> and play Dota in the cafe, right? And then uh, we all know that SLT's internet was shit in those days. So we actually, even though League of Legends came out in 2009, we actually didn't get League of Legends until like I know what. 2011 until, or so? Yeah, until everyone yeah. got the proper internet connections with unlimited. Remember the 50k BPS unlimited <laughs> exactly, thing? Right? Exactly. That's when you started considering gaming online, right? Till then it exactly. was single player this, single so player you that. Just, so you just couldn't play League of Legends, period, because you had to connect to a foreign server. But you could play Dota because you could go to the cafe and sit right yeah. next to the guy you were playing with. You could have a, you could uh, go the, on. Uh, the land. What was it? Yeah. Yes, you could do land. And what was it? We used Xfire and we used to tunnel like mad. We used to connect people on XY and put them in a lobby and we used to tunnel to each other and we, we would get a game running. 
Right. Right. And 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 all the pros eventually evolved out of the Dota scene. They there was a little bit there was a little bit of an affair with the Heroes of New Earth. It didn't last. Heroes Everybody of pretty New Earth. Much... Uh, yeah. But it Hon is Hon's pretty hard. The goal, game but it is just good, didn't last. but it's not the it's not just the game, right? Even though the game is brilliant, let's say it's better than League and Dota, right? Even if we give them that which I don't believe that, but even if we do give them that, you still need to play the community aspect. If you don't, the exactly. game is eventually going to die. Exactly. So as far as Sri Lanka was concerned, there's always Dota. And then 2011, there was League, and people were talking like, hmm, what's this League thing we keep hearing about? And then Valve said, you know what, we're going to give you Dota too. Done. Done. And Valve had a huge following, because Counter-Strike... Game is love, game is life. Yeah. Exactly. Counter Strike had the same kind of cult following here. Yes. Because oh people, my got, God. people got Counter Strike, people started playing it, and then, you know, internet speeds are crap. I still play Counter Strike 1.6 to this it's, day. It's mad fun. It's amazing fun. It's too simple. You can't really complain about anything. It well, has the sort of Minecraft well, I, experience. I grew up playing uh, Unreal Tournament and oh, Quake. Okay. That explains a lot. Yeah, so from I never really got into Counter Strike, but I acknowledge it's fun. But I never got into uh, the thing about Counter Strike. The thing about Counter Strike is the game is really small and it's simple. Any computer yeah. can run it. Any computer can run it, and anybody you know with enough practice, they can. I mean, if you practice hard enough, if you put your spirit and whatnot, or whatever you have into it, you might actually turn out good. Hmm. So, uh, so yeah, we so eventually Valve said, yeah, you know what, we're gonna give you Dota 2, and Dota 2 arrived, and everybody just went bananas over it. Fair enough. I mean, just so people who are listening and have a perspective of how things go, I play a lot of League of Legends, yes, and, when and I say I a lot. used to play a lot of League of Legends, but now we've shifted to Dota. I li- <laughs> dude, I literally used to play a lot of League, ne? Mm. I mean, okay, you're I, the guy I, who got me into League, right? Yeah, fair enough. Now I've played around, <laughs> you've wasted around 1,500 hours of my life and so on. And... <laughs> I feel so good for that. <laughs> uh, but you know what, League, I sort of became disillusioned with it. Why though? Because the way they, because how they release champions. Ah, yeah, yeah, that, that's always there, right? And the fact <laughs> that they nerf them, and the fact that they nerf, do you see, there's a it's, roster it's of what, basically a sale, right? The sale, in ter- the sale isn't in terms of here's a discount. The sale is in terms of here, buy this champion. It's stronger than everyone else. So for this short period exactly. of time, you can win exactly. with this. And here's, here's the sad part. Riot always tries to balance for that 50% figure, right? 50% wins, 50% losses in their player base. Yeah. And the really sad part is you have, you know you have a lot of shit players. You have like tons of shit players at the low end. And you even have tons of shit players in bronze they don't get any better so when you balance for idiots like that how right how right approaches it is they nerf the characters uh, rather than rather than you know working out how to deal with these players true it's an so, issue yeah so end of the day they screw up the game for everybody and all the characters with all these nerves they turn into a sort of homogeneous goo <laughs> so at any given point you have only like 30 or so actual competitively playable characters and then there's this thing called the meta, which is honestly stupid. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah, Screw they keep, the they keep saying we don't want players to play according to meta, but then again they introduce items that make sure that Look, you need a very specific. If you're trying to break the meta to like. in league, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a really bad time. And what I like about Dota is that it's a lot more freeform. Hell, I'm not saying it's a better game or anything of the sort. Let's if not you get do. into that. If you do, <laughs> <laughs> boom, <laughs> boom. But. Uh, it's a lot more freeform. There's a lot more shit you can do with it. Hmm. And there is no meta per se. Oh, and by the way, if you guys are into gaming and the whole esports thing in Sri Lanka, you have definitely got to come to SLCG. SLCG is Sri Lanka's biggest and only, I guess, cyber gaming conventions of sorts. There's going to be tons of stuff happening. Oh, it's, yes. It's going yes. to be on the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st of December at is it, BMICH. Is it at BMSH? Yes. It's... Nice. So, so uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be bigger than last year, right? It's always it's, been it's bigger always and bigger and better. bigger. Yeah. It's always been better. The admins have like really, really managed to do that very well. Uh, so, which sports are you looking forward to? 
Honestly, I am uh, only looking forward to league because I don't really play Dota and I'm but, not but a... some of the some of the league's best players well some of their best players have been dropping out recently. Yeah, but they're still going to be competing in league. I'm pretty sure you're talking about the guys from Noob Alliance. Mm, there's Noob Alliance, there's people from uh, Xyphos um dropping out de- from Tempest spe- specifically from Tempest they dropping I think they were dropping out due to uh, work issues. Yeah, but uh, I'm still assuming it's going to be a pretty decent one. I I might register to play for fun if I feel like to. <laughs> that that actually would be pretty cool. I mean, it's not I'm I'm a pretty decent support. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you played support, right? Yes, support I, Leona. I played Rise. <laughs> Rise all the way to bronze and then started playing different stuff. And then when they nerfed Rise, oh, I had... they they wrecked him first. Dude, he was so good. He was overpowered, dude. He still is. If you can, he's a hyper carry. If you can play him properly, he's always and... OP. Oh, no, not. I mean, really. not like ye OP, right? But he's not OP. He's 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 very easy to deal with. Have you seen the new uh, jungle items, dude? Yeah, I've seen him. Like I've seen four the four point two patch that came out. Uh, the day but before he's, yesterday, he's good. He's pretty good, but um, he carry. He gives no real utility to the team. I think they're actually going to, straying off way too far. And no one who <laughs> understands uh, who doesn't yeah. speak, who hasn't played league, understands anything you're saying. So I'm going Nobody... to drag us back in and all back right, in from right. uh, the entire <laughs> esports scene all the way into tech worldwide and say there's something really funny happening because BlackBerry. We all know what BlackBerry is, the kind of phones that no one is uh, using and is going under. BlackBerry is doing something pretty funny. The fact that they are actually going to pay you money to ditch your iPhone and to move on to a BlackBerry passport. Now, uh, what? starting on the 1st of December, BlackBerry will pay mm-hmm. its customers up to 400 bucks to trade mm-hmm. in their old iPhones. Now, these iPhones range from anything from an iPhone 4S to all the new 6 models. And what basically happens is they give you an additional no, hundred and fifty no, no, no. up to up to five hundred and fifty dollars. Depends well, on no, the no, it's, uh, yeah, it's four hundred bucks. But dude, have but you seen the passport? Extra... I have. It's it it's lo- hideous. It's weird, is what I was going to say. Yeah. But I guess you could call it that as well. It, you could call it hideous because oh, it is just. Well, they said when they said passport, they weren't kidding. It literally <laughs> looks like a passport. You can't put the damn thing in your pocket. It's too fat, and it basically looks like I don't know a if, passport. If, Maybe I don't. <laughs> it looks like a passport. Right, but I mean, if, if the iPhone is is Taylor Swift, um, then this is Queen. Latifah. There's a lot of stuff going on about Taylor Swift. Now. I really don't want to get into that. <laughs> Let's not talk about exactly. Taylor Swift. Exactly. I don't like her music. Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna get people like. <laughs> Never mind. And All of this something I don't relevant. like is happening. The what? Federal Aviation Administration, the FFAA, now is deciding to regulate. They actually got the approval okay. to regulate drones. You know Wait, drones, in, right? There's, there's one in Sri Lanka. As in not the Sri Lankan one, but the United States one, right? But oh, nobody, that's how no, it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Nobody gives a damn about the United States. No, but that's always how. Legislature begins. Some and there's but an they, issue, and then they well, they need they need drones, and uh, they need is drones. This, is but, this specifically for civilian drones? Yes, that's the thing. Like the Phantom yeah. DJI and stuff like that. Right. Well, Here's the thing. I think it's because Mr. Barack Drone Master Obama <laughs> doesn't want to be beaten at his own game by a bunch oh, of guys from oh, Radio oh, Shack. It's... But here's oh. the thing, right? <laughs> what I believe now, Google and Amazon are basically using drones like hell, and Amazon's even going to release a drone delivering feature. But I'm well, assuming what they're going to do is here's the thing: Google that, and Amazon yeah, are massive movers in the U.S. economy. Right? Now, here's the thing: this is what I believe what would happen yeah. in the end. Mm-hmm. I think what's going to happen is the fact that now they're going to have to make people they're going to make people go through tons of paperwork, which small individual like hobbyists won't go through but companies yeah, like yeah. Amazon and Google will and eventually exactly. the, the little guy is going to get screwed over and then uh, yeah you know how it works well, pretty much pretty much but here's something even better the the whole internet has been going completely bananas and I don't mean Mahesh <laughs> uh, <laughs> have you seen something called Regin 
no, I have not. Regin is a new um, piece of malware unearthed by ah, yes, yes, the guys yes. like Norton. Is it Simantech or Simantech? How do you put it? Let's call I think. Them. Yeah, who cares, right? You don't want to call them Simantech. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's call them Simon Tech. They've unearthed a piece of malware so sophisticated that they say there is an entire nation state or a government behind it. And this thing is basically a mass espionage tool. It's It can uh, do anything from targeting individuals to spying on entire corporations, telcos, branches of the government. And it's been completely undetected. It's been floating in the wild since 2008. That's interesting. That's a very that long is, time. That is a very long time. And these guys are saying, you know what they've said? In the world of malware threats, only a few rare examples can be considered groundbreaking and almost peerless. What we've seen in Regin is just a class of, uh, just such a class of malware. It's extraordinary and it's designed to sustain long-term intelligence gathering operations by remaining under the radar. It combines many of the most advanced techniques that we have ever seen in use. Damn. And these, these aren't guys who get impressed recently, but, but let me go one up on that. Um, Sony Pictures got hacked. Yeah, yeah, that was... Uh... Yeah, like that that went, uh, that was all over Reddit. And Kickstarter banned uh, something called Bloodsport. Have you seen that? No, I have not. Mainly Blood because Sport? probably got banned. Well, probably. Bloodsport was an interesting thing. It was a hacked Nintendo controller that would draw blood every time you took damage. Okay. That's actually creepy. That's, that's, it. Like, that's what we were talking about in the last game when you said there were <laughs> mech warriors and I thought if the guy dies in the game, he should probably die in real life. Exactly. And you said, good thing I'm not working it, but there are other people I can look up to to actually no, carry out are... my plan. <laughs> there are people who got bad. They were trying to do it in a good sense. But they're, what they're saying is, you know, when you take damage, you there's a blood donation, there's a blood collection machine, just like what you would see in a blood uh, donation camp. And no, no, take no, your no, that's blood. Wrong. And they should donate. be injecting poison. <laughs> But but seriously, dude, you release something like that to the public, <laughs> regardless of whether Wait, you say so it's it blood got funding. Or not, the Kickstarter pulled it down because it was getting something. Wow, that's actually terrifying because you have something like that in public. It's not going to be that long before people start reverse engineering that thing, injecting poison, using that to play Russian roulette, whatever. Like imagine How a Mortal cool Kombat fight that? to the death. Mortal Kombat fight to the death. You and me. And you'll die of basically having your blood leached out of you. But here's the thing, right? At the end of the day, like, I would have more health than you because I have more blood than you, IRL. Mm, that's not how it works. The health bar is mapped to your blood. It's not possible. No, no, but, here, but I mean, come on. Like, I have, I don't know, I, you have, I have at least six liters of blood in me. <laughs> I right? actually have. Uh, if, if not the same amount, I actually have more. No, you, no, you can't. You probably don't have more than you probably have like five point five. How the hell would I have five point five? Because the average human being has like five to six liters of blood. Okay, and it doesn't uh, doesn't go like, oh look, I have twenty liters of blood. Okay, <laughs> but what's your metric for saying you have more blood than I do? Body mass. It changes it slightly because the larger the organs are, the more blood you would need to function. Slightly, but I'm also a better Mortal Kombat player. Oh, with that uh, that uh. challenge <laughs> accepted. And I'm so like, get over what, here, and I throw the scorpion. You know what? When you come back from Nepal, yes. let's let's bootleg, <laughs> let's somehow get a copy of this controller. Let's hook it up to a blood donation camp. Let's, let's make it. And let, <laughs> yes, we will. Well, it's quite easy to make. It's basically a Nintendo controller hooked up to an Arduino, oh, and, okay. and and some stuff, and the whole blood stuff, and tubes, and needles, and shit. But you know, that's irrelevant. I have those. <laughs> Right, so yeah. and with the blood drawing, we shall end the episode for the day. It went a little longer than I planned. I wanted it to be 10 minutes because the flight leaves in a few hours and I have to edit this and upload it before I leave. That YOLO. should be fun. YOLO. Right, thank but you all anyway, for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, as soon as this guy comes back, you will see his um, bloodless carcass dumped somewhere. <laughs> and on that bombshell, we will leave you and go to Nepal.